Hello and welcome to the Curriculum Development Process Professional Learning Series. The focus in this module is Phase 3 of the CDP, Develop the Curriculum. My name is Fox Moise and I'm joined by Misty Higgins. We are professional learning coordinators in the Division of Program Standards and the Office of Teaching and Learning at the Kentucky Department of Education. There are four phases to the CDP and four corresponding modules. Before engaging module three, we suggest you access the introduction to the curriculum development process and modules one and two to gain a context for the learning that follows. For this module, please make sure you have access to the following documents. The curriculum development process from the model curriculum framework, a copy of the participant handout to hold your thinking throughout the module, and the CDP self-assessment tool, which you will use at the end of the module to assess where your district may be in relation to the essential elements of phase three. All materials are hyperlinked on the slide for easy access. Before we move into phase three content, it will be helpful for you to establish a baseline level of understanding. Look briefly at the name phase three, develop the curriculum and its three steps. Next, consider our learning goal. We are learning about the importance of HQIRs and key curricular elements to consider when developing the local curriculum template. This information will be helpful on the next slide when we activate background knowledge you might have about the third phase of this curriculum process, and it's also available at the top of your participant handout. We will use a no need to know approach for activating background knowledge. First, note things you may already know about our learning goal, perhaps using the title and steps of, of the phase for added insight. As we are beginning, this can certainly include hunches you may have as well. Next, infer things that may be helpful for you to find out based on the learning goal, things you may need to know. Both what you may know and what you may need to know here at the beginning can be recorded in the table on page one of your participant handout. As the module unfolds, hold these in mind. You will be invited to update them during midpoint and closing reflections. After capturing what you may know and need to know, please synthesize your sense of overall understanding using the one to five scale provided. This too will be revisited during the closing reflection. Please pause the video and restart after completing the self-assessment. Now that you have a preliminary sense of where you might be relative to our learning goal, let's move into success, the success criteria for module three. By the end of this session, we want you to be able to examine the importance of HQIRs in supporting implementation of a locally developed curriculum, identify key actions and products of phase three of the curriculum development process, access resources to support implementation of phase three, and develop an action plan for implementing phase three at the local level. Let's start with our first success criterion where we want you to examine the importance of HQIRs in supporting implementation of a locally developed curriculum. Why are instructional resources so critical to addressing gaps in learning? This slide shows how many factors influence what happens in the classroom. Instructional materials exert their influence both directly on student learning and indirectly on teachers' choices as they prepare and facilitate the learning. A scholastic report from 2016 found these to be the top funding, funding priorities identified by teachers. The gaps in current materials are not just noticed by researchers and district leads. Teachers, those using the instructional resources every day with their students, are clear the resources are not yet aligned and they would prioritize funding for HQIRs if given the choice. When teachers do not have access to HQIRs, they often resort to searching websites like Google and Pinterest that offer unvetted resources piecemealed together. This consumes valuable time for a yield that is uneven at best. This slide from the new teacher project, TNTP, again underscores how much of teachers' time is consumed by seeking or creating resources. It also illustrates how these resources found or made fall short in grade level alignment, subject specific practices, and helping students make connections to their own ideas and to the world around them. The Supplemental Curriculum Bazaar is What's Online Any Good, a 2019 study examined over 300 of the most downloaded materials across three of the most popular supplemental websites looking for alignment to standards, coherence of materials, and materials for students needing additional support. The report shows that while lessons may be somewhat aligned to the intent of the standards, 
Most provide little to no support for differentiation, which was identified as one of the primary reasons teachers searched for supplements to begin with. Vital supports for increasing equity or for fostering social emotional learning would also be largely absent from most resources found online. Again from TNTP, here we see that while resources created or curated by a district may offer somewhat higher quality and a degree of coherence, they remain un unaligned 48% of the time to grade level standards. Teacher created or selected resources come in as aligned 25% of the time. Overall outcomes demonstrate that even when students are successful in classroom assignments, if those assignments are not properly aligned to grade level standards, students are not prepared for the rigors of future college level coursework. The research also shows students of color and from low income backgrounds are most impacted and least likely to have access to grade level instruction. In summary, to ensure equitable opportunity for students to learn and to become ready for future learning, we need the four key resources of grade appropriate assignments, strong instruction, deep engagement, and teachers who hold high expectations to be present, and grade level content to be the core of classroom instruction. So research-based high quality curriculum and instructional resources do support making equitable opportunity a reality. To reiterate the benefits of high quality instructional resources for teachers and students, teachers can spend more time supporting students and their learning needs when they are not parsing and bundling standards, building lessons from scratch, and searching for instructional resources to drive those lessons. Since we have reached a focus on the essential role of HQIRs, let's reset KDE's general definition of HQIRs. Please take a moment to read it. To clarify briefly some important terms, by comprehensive we mean resources address the full depth of standards for each grade level and include pedagogical and instructional supports to meet the diverse needs of students. Culturally relevant free from bias in this context is thinking about acknowledging students' ethnic, racial, and linguistic identities within the context of their grade level work in ways that do not create barriers to obstruct student learning and materials that are accessible for all students looks to ensure equitable opportunity regardless of unique experiences and qualities, so students can engage meaningfully in the learning process and have an opportunity to fully demonstrate their understandings and skills. When selecting primary and then supplemental instructional resources, it is important to be clear about the construct, about the parts and their relationship to the whole and to its purpose. Within the curriculum development process, the primary HQR is like the backbone of a local curriculum. It is the central instructional resource that supports, supports most of what the curriculum intends to do with its arrangement of standards, texts, tasks, assessments, and related pedagogical supports. That said, no single HQIR will ultimately be able to provide everything. Supplemental resources may be added as gaps emerge from the primary resource and need to be filled in order to fully realize the instructional vision. We want to give you an opportunity to process these slides with your team. Please discuss the prompt, how could intentional use of high quality instructional resources, primary and supplemental, improve the implementation of a local curriculum? Make sure talk time is shared equitably as you ask each other clarifying questions and make connections. Also, you can capture any new or additional ideas in the space provided on your participant handout. Pause the video and restart after the team discussion. If you have more than one team, you may want to have a whole group share out to hear from everyone. What thoughts, ideas, connections, or questions do you have regarding the potential positive impacts of using HQIRs in your local context? Pause the video and restart after the whole group share out. Let's move into the second success criterion that you can identify key actions and products of phase three of the curriculum development process. Phase three is where the curriculum team you have formed builds out from an instructional vision for teaching and learning in the content area toward adopting a primary HQIR. This includes synthesizing the instructional vision into succinct selection criteria, using the criteria 
to identify and evaluate potential HQIRs, and creating a curriculum document to support effective implementation of the selected HQIR. Phase three arrives at developed curriculum ready for implementation planning. We want to pause and give you a chance to read phase three. As you read, focus on the key actions and products of each step of phase three. Feel free to annotate directly on the text and space is provided under success criterion two on the participant handout to capture your thinking. Right now, we want you to focus on the text and the key questions. We will take a closer look at the key tools a little later in the session. Pause the video and restart after you have read phase three and captured your thinking on the participant handout. We want to give you an opportunity to process what you read with your team. Discuss each step in order, focusing on the key actions and products. Make sure talk time is shared equitably as you ask each other clarifying questions and make connections regarding how you currently develop the local curriculum document and select instructional resources. Also, you can capture any new or additional ideas in the space provided on your participant handout. Pause the video and restart after your team discussion. If you have more than one team, you may want to have a whole group share out here to hear from everyone. What thoughts, ideas, connections, or questions do you have regarding phase three of the curriculum development process? Because phase three is where so much critical action is taken toward having a curriculum ready for implementation, we want to spend some time taking a closer look at what goes into creating a curriculum document that can guide implementation. On the left side of your screen, you see potential or common reasons why a school or system might add supplemental resources into their curriculum. And on the right, you see examples of adjustments to address the gaps. Please take a moment to read them. Okay, a few things to note. So anything we pull in needs to be vetted and of the highest possible quality. Um, make sure there are specific reasons for the resources we pull in. Resources aren't brought in because they have been used in the past or because they're liked or might be comfortable. You are using the primary resource, the HQIR you selected, as that, as primary and as the guide. Addi additional resources or supplements are strategically pulled in with a specific purpose. Once resources, primary and supplemental, have been selected, developing a curriculum template creates a map to support communication and access. Four, four key features to consider when developing a curriculum template are that, they, that it establishes the curricular elements aligned to the instructional vision that must be present in every classroom, that it highlights within the HQIR where key curricular elements are addressed for each unit or module, that it locates where supplemental resources might be required to address depths and dimensions unique to the CAS and to the local context, and that it provides broad-based access and ease of use to support navigation. Again, we need to understand how an HQIR accounts for these features and where needs for elaboration and or further support might be. Following from the first bullet on the previous slide, consider curricular elements aligned to the instructional vision that must be present in every classroom. The five here represent elements you may choose to consider as tight or non-negotiable. Please take a moment to read them. HQIR should support each of these elements. That said, it's important to understand how they do so to support planning for and facilitation of learning. And it is important to note on your curriculum document which aspects might need further elaboration and or additional support, what those supporting or supplemental resources are if needed and where they can be found. Two big comments or two big concepts to comment on as this segment closes, concepts that surface during this work are flexibility and autonomy. For flexibility, implementing an HQIR as the primary resource does not need to mean sticking lockstep to an external script. Time to respond to student needs, those that arise within the course of learning and those in the local context identified prior to adoption must be included. The ability to linger longer when learning is especially rich 
or to extend a unit into a project, for example, should be present. And once educators are familiar with the resource, it can be as long as expectations for what is tight and what can be more loose are clear. For autonomy, educators must be empowered to examine the HQIR at the course, unit, and lesson levels to determine precisely how what's provided meets student needs and interests within the local context, and to make adjustments that don't compromise the overall integrity of the learning design when needed. Likewise, as educators gain experience with the resource over time, they will see more openings for stylistic preferences to be inflected in the learning while still leveraging essential strengths of the HQIR. Now that we are at the midpoint of the module, we want to pause and give you a chance to reflect. Based on your learning so far in this module, what might you add to your no need to know table on page one of your participant handout? This can include transferring items from your need to know to your no list when appropriate. Pause the video and restart after you capture your thinking on the no need to know table. Let's move into our third success criterion that you can access resources to support implementation of phase three. While there are several tools included in the CDP, we want to take a little time to highlight a few of those key tools that may be most useful in supporting the work. At its best, a successful adoption process begins with identifying clear selection criteria. The developing local selection criteria and data collection tools work together to help the team ground the selection criteria in their instructional vision to guide the selection process. Another useful tool for developing the selection criteria is the sample stakeholder questions, which offers a range of possible questions for th three key groups, so teachers, families, communities, and students, to help ensure that multiple perspectives are taken into account to help inform the selection criteria. Once the team has determined its selection criteria, the next step is to identify potential HQIRs for further evaluation. For reading and writing and mathematics, Ed Reports should be the place to begin. Ed Reports is an independent educator-led nonprofit that reviews instructional resources to better inform district and school resource adoption processes. The site has quality ratings for most resources currently available. The video tutorial offers a quick walkthrough to support navigating the site. The How to Read an Ed Reports review provides guidance on understanding the information contained in their reviews. Once the team has identified some potential HQIRs, the next step is resource evaluation. The instructional resource alignment rubrics from the KDE offer guidance for multiple content areas. While the rubrics are important to consult for all content areas, they are especially valuable for those areas not currently reviewed by outside organizations such as EdReports. These tools help teams evaluate resources for alignment to the Kentucky academic standards and to determine strengths and possible gaps in potential resources. The sample vendor questions provide possible questions teams can use to guide conversations with vendors to ensure resources meet their selection criteria and instructional vision. The equity lenses created in partnership with leading educators describes five equity lenses and provides guidance on how to use those lenses when evaluating resources to ensure equitable learning environments for all students across the district or school. Phase three, step two, focuses on the creation of a curriculum document template that plans a coherent instructional experience within and across grade levels that systematically builds student understanding of the CAS and reflects the beliefs of the instructional vision. The curriculum template tool serves as an example of one possible arrangement of key considerations present in the curriculum development process. It is not a requirement and it is meant as guidance only. The template helps frame how the primary HQIR should be used according to the local instructional vision for it. It should also identify when supplemental resources might be needed and articulate how they fit into the overall vision. Step three is to develop the supports within the local curriculum template aligned to each essential element, which helps ensure schools and districts are providing a curriculum with meaningful guidance. The key tool is a sample from Wayne County that illustrates just one way of developing the supports with a locally developed curriculum that establishes the expectations for the student experience. In addition to the key tools, the CDP also contains an appendix that provides more support for implementing each phase. The phase three toolkit includes the professional learning module and associated resources, sample artifacts from districts around the state, and video clips from districts sharing their experiences as they work through the process. 
In the last column of additional resources, the toolkit for phase three contains a link to the reading and writing instructional resources consumer guide, and this supports phase three step one. The guide includes specific markers to look for when selecting high quality reading and writing resources that align with the Kentucky academic standards, as well as some reading and writing specific versions of the key tools from phase three in the CDP. There is also a short video that walks you through the purpose and structure of the reading and writing consumer guide. Consumer guides for other content areas will be added in the future as they become available. Another resource to highlight for phase three is the Rivet Professional Learning Partner Guide. Rivet is a nonprofit organization that evaluates and recommends professional learning partners who provide curriculum aligned services to schools and districts, including support with the local adoption process. We want to highlight two of the sample artifacts that are included in the toolkit for phase three. The first artifact is from Graves County and highlights the document they created to gather input from the curriculum team as they evaluated their top HQIR choices for reading and writing. Using clear structures and documents to organize the notes for the team as they evaluate each resource is critical to the selection process and can help streamline decision making. This is an example of a local curriculum template created by Estill County Schools that reflects the essential elements in their instructional vision and uh, places to clearly document where the primary and supplemental resources will be used to help students reach the grade level expectations within the CAS. We want to give you an opportunity to explore phase three tools and resources. You may want to spend some time exploring individually or with your team. As you explore, focus on which tools and resources may be most beneficial to supporting the work of phase three, and what are maybe some tool, uh, tools and resources still needed to support phase three. You can hold your thinking in the space provided under success criterion three on your participant handout. Pause the video and restart after exploring the resources and capturing your thinking on the handout. If you explored individually or as a team but have more than one team in your group, take time to have a whole group share out to hear from the other teams. So during your exploration, which tools and resources did you feel will be most beneficial? And what were some tools and resources that you may know or that you may have noted that are still needed to support phase three? Pause the video and restart after the whole group share out. We are moving into our last success criterion where we want to provide you time to begin and to develop an action plan for implementing phase three at the local level. Before thinking through your action plan, we want to pause for a final reflection to anchor your learning from the session so that you can move it forward into application. So go back to your no need to know table on page one of your participant handout. And first, we would like for you to review the items on your no list and update those as needed. And then when you look back over the list, which item seems most important for you to remember? Then we want you to review the items on your need to know list and again, update as needed. Determine which item seems most important to address in supporting implementation of phase three in your district. Record both of those items in the space provided under success criterion four on your participant handout. Pause the video and restart after completing this portion of the final reflection. Lastly, we want you to reassess your overall level of understanding of our learning goal after engaging in the module on that scale of one to five. Determine your rating now in the space provided under success criterion four. Pause the video and restart after completing the second portion of the final reflection. To help you determine possible next steps, we recommend that you complete this section from the CDP self-assessment tool focused on essential element three, a local curriculum grounded in a primary high quality instructional resource. The element is broken down into two indicators, 3A focused on selecting a primary high quality instructional resource and 3B focused on developing the local curriculum document with support from the HQIR. Each indicator is broken down into specific criteria necessary for supporting that element with a place for you to give a rating on a scale of one being not present in our district to three being fully present and systematic in our district. Again, this may be helpful um, as you uh, to help you pinpoint like specific aspects of phase three that you might want to prioritize as a part of your action plan. 
With your district teams, we want you to begin thinking about possible next steps, completion dates, supporting resources, responsibilities, and support you'll need for implementing phase three back in your district. The planning template is located under success criterion four on your participant handout. Finally, we ask that you take time to complete the short PL survey to provide feedback on module three. An EDL certificate is available and can be accessed at the end of the survey. Please feel free to reach out to me or Fox with any questions you may have. Thank you for participating in module three of the curriculum development process professional learning series.